Some claim that the age of a true gentleman is far behind us, but here at Twit4 Media, we disagree. He may appear in different guises today, but the values and ideals that make him a gent still stand. Gentlemen, aspiring gentlemen, and of course, our partners that hold us down, I am Ron Grant. Welcome back to season six of The Art of a Distinguished Gentleman, a show poised to help guide modern day men into 21st century distinguished gentlemen. Now don't worry, it's not about suits and bow ties, but instead real life lessons that truly translate to grounded, community-minded, well-rounded men. The name is Terence Neal Jr., by far one of the most highly creative professionals across the Virgin Islands. A friend for a very, very long time, and I'm so proud to have this creative visual arts genius on the set today. We're going to talk a lot of things, uh, but of course, we're going to talk about the foundation and the work that goes into being one of the best creatives uh, he is. We'll be right back after a quick commercial break. Gentlemen, it's time to discover That Guy Experience. We are a product line specifically catering to the men with beards. Our products are 100% natural and handmade right here in the BBI. Butters, oils, and cleansing products all designed to add softeners, shine, and growth to your beard and hair. Visit us at Meraki Hair Clinic or thatguybbi.com and begin your journey as that guy. We are a life-changing experience. That Guy Hair and Beard Products. Welcome back, viewers, and thank you so much for sticking with us. As promised, I am joined by the one and only, the creative extraordinaire, uh, Mr. Terrence Neal. Brother, welcome to the set, and thank you for your time. Thank you, Ron. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Cheers. Cheers. Now, as I said, and I mean it wholeheartedly, creative extraordinaire, uh, you have been wearing your craft for quite a while. Uh, not only as a musician, but a creative director. Um, you have some really fascinating work in uh, juxtaposition as well. And I'm going to ask you to explain that for us. Break that down. What does that mean? But in a nutshell, for the persons that don't know who Terrence is, who are you? Um, I am a professional musician, I would say, with an um, obsession for um, visual art. Okay. That's that's. The best way I would explain That's the myself. best way you could put it. Yeah. Uh, when you are in that space, and how long have you been in the visual arts space? Visual arts from high school. Okay. Um, I had like friends and stuff and we were on Tumblr and we would just try to recreate things that we um saw on Tumblr. You know, I, um, I used to go to church, mm -hmm. um, New Testament, Church of God and... Um, Timothy Barker, as you know, a prominent person in the community, you know, had a camera, a DSLR, and he would let me, you know, just take the camera during the weekend, shoot different stuff, you know. So um, my friend, um, Christopher Kisun, actually, um, mm -hmm. he picked up photography off of that. Like, I would, cool. yeah, I would let him use the camera as well, you know, because we, we didn't have any models or anything mm -hmm. to shoot the things that we saw. So, you know, we would kind of just go and, buy the clothes ourselves you know and i had to model because i got you i didn't have any models you know and christopher was like nah you know and sean as well um sean had his dad as well um john black mm -hmm. i'm talking about sean black and um sean as well would you know he his dad was gracious enough to just trust him with that camera his dad super believed in him and he was like yo you know um yeah just take the camera you know so we would be come into school like mm -hmm. with DSLRs, you know, and just trying to recreate things that we saw online that we found super inspiring, you know? And know all of you actually doing it for a living. Yeah. 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 Beautiful. I want to talk about the differentiation because um, as I said in the introduction, you use the term juxtaposition uh, for non-creatives, uh, persons who are not from that world. What does that mean? Break it down for us. <laughs> Um, juxtaposition just means um, two opposing ideas coming together to um, create one thing, okay. something new. So for instance, um, a term I, I use from a couple of projects would be um, archives of 2077. So it's like an archive is supposed to be something of the past, 
but 20 we are obviously course, 9 20 course, yeah. 77 you know um that's that's a principle i love from um, design i just apply it to everything in my life you know i love it in food hmm. just different things yeah so for instance like i guess you would say like sweet and sour that's actually an example of juxtaposition it's gotcha. just two opposing ideas coming together to um create something new or street fashion and high fashion exactly those two things wouldn't normally go together but, exactly okay. yeah you wouldn't expect them to but that that became a thing and now we have a huge streetwear um thing yeah understood now when you are in the moment um really in that craft what is that space like for you what is your your level of preparation as a uh creative director working with your clients um it depends on what the clients come with um, of course, first we have to um, discuss like what you um how how much you want me involved mm-hmm. like literally like because some people already have ideas they have an idea of how they want to look they have an idea of what they want to do but then some other people are like you know like mm-hmm. I just like what I see on your Instagram like gotcha give me that and so from there you know we start with um i would give like examples like you know do you like this do you like that sometimes i actually have to style as well mm-hmm. um i don't always have to style but most of the time i would have to do some styling okay. as well so um that that's i think i would say that that's where i tend to start i would well sorry first i would have like a theme like a general idea of what we're doing and then my next thing is like styling like I like um, details. I like to um, make sure that we feel like we're in um, whatever time. Um, like I told you before, like I'm big on time. I mm-hmm. like I like time, you know. So a lot of my work would be um, like it would feel more futuristic. But also, um, I did um, Stefan, who's a local artist. Yes. He had one that was um, Tola Boy Radio. Okay. And his idea when he came to me, he said, um, "I want something to feel like." the early 2000s okay and so you know we went and we got like the bike we got like the well i managed to um get a bike from um bay rock mm-hmm. another local artist of course. yeah um so he was and that's the next thing like the local arts community is very very much willing Generous, to help each other out. Yeah. yeah it's really nice so bay rock like the idea he gave me the bike you know we had our airbrush shirt you know just all those details so it was styling and then after it was um composing a shot sometimes i don't always have an idea of how um i want the shot to be exactly based on references so i'd have to um discuss with um sean black who i work with very tightly um and he would have an idea um we would just discuss i would just send different things to um bring it together to then create a certain shot because i most of the times when i'm doing creative direction i'm doing it with one shot in mind you know like you have various pictures but most of the time i have one shot in mind that i'm trying to go for so most of the props everything is like around that shot understood attention to detail obviously um i've understood that from you for a very very long time what are what would you say is one of the misconceptions of being a creative Uh, when persons look at you and look at your work um they might uh admire your style when persons think of being a creative, whether it be visual arts, creative director, what do you think is one of the biggest misconceptions? Um, I would say one of the biggest misconceptions is people tend to feel like it's easy. Mm-hmm. Um, and when I say easy, I mean like it's just fun. I feel like most of the best creatives are like enthusiasts, mm-hmm. you know, and I take that very seriously in everything that you do like any good artist here they they do research straight up like with everything i do mm-hmm. i have to do research and there's no way you could understand the details there's no way you can understand um how to mix and match things if you don't first get the understanding of the foundation and um details that's, that's how you get to details mm-hmm. you know you have to understand the foundation so even like um when I'm designing, um, I have a brand that I work with. Um, I'm the creative director for the brand Cake Boys, you know. Okay. And when I'm designing, um, everyone would, that works with me could tell you, like, I have an idea and then I'm, like, researching, like, on the idea. Like, you would just see a nice design later on, you know. But, like, 
if I'm doing like, I did like a t-shirt about recycling or like homegrown studios actually did a, um, a shirt with as well, you know, just, I'm always like researching, like, how do we make this translate well even in like you're, you're not going to be thinking about it when you're wearing it mm -hmm. but like i like that that was there you know got you got you one of the things that i want to understand and, and and really put into perspective for uh the viewing public uh particularly locally and on the regional scene uh, many persons look at productions music videos concerts what have you and and like you mentioned, think it's easy, but also don't understand the level of work and organization from a creative director um, that it takes to pull off uh, certain projects. Uh, I speak to that and speak to the importance of us really promoting and allowing our young people to venture into the creative space. And by that, I mean, okay, we're on camera. I'm the host, usually always, um, whether it's news, or the art of a distinguished gentleman, whether it's reporting, uh, crime scene, whatever it is, uh, someone has to edit that. Someone has to record that. Exactly. Right? Um, I usually do all my writing myself, so there's a writer as well. Um, there are different facets to 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 the various creative processes, and I don't think persons understand that. So speak to that. Yeah. Um. One of the biggest things about production, Ron, I think, is the importance of a team, and um understanding like everyone has their role i think a lot of people right now you know they see a music video on television and say okay you know i want to have a music video so the first thing they're going to do is go to sean right they're going to go to the cinematographer okay however like you're missing a lot of steps for them to shoot day to come now and sean is going to do his best in terms of lighting and that kind of thing but you're expecting him to then give you ideas, tell you like, yo, you know, you should do this, you should do that. When really and truly like, that's a that's a whole different role. You know, you're asking him to um get props, you know, that's a whole different role. You know, like I think, I feel like we don't understand um, that there are different roles. I did, um, I did a, like a music video for a live arrangement mm -hmm. that I did and pre-production alone, um, where, where I had my team and we had a whole write-up. Um, I had um, Shamar Trim mm -hmm. doing casting. Another talented creative. Exactly. So Shamar was in charge of casting. And I think he was in charge of, um, he was in charge of props as well. And he was in charge of styling all of the, um, all of the cast, okay. the, the entire cast besides me. He was in charge of that. Um, and he also assisted me with creative direction. Um, Sean directed... And um, what does the Sean do? Sean directed and, of course, lighting via Donovan, mm -hmm. did lighting via Donovan, was um, set director. You out, here, you out here walking with the best, all the best. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So via, via did um, set direction as well because she went to school of to, course, to yeah. do these things, you know. So um, and she was very grateful for the opportunity to be able to, like, work in this different role that, like, you, we don't normally have. Get the, the chance to. Yeah. Exactly. You know, so via was in charge of, like. I was like, Via, you know, like, yeah, I supposed to do this, but like, I, I'm going to tell you now, like on the day of shooting, I'm going to get frustrated and I'm going to be tired. <laughs> like <laughs> you have to make sure that I go until we get the shot. Yeah. yeah and yeah. Via's like, yeah, we have our shot list. Terrence, we have to go again because we still have shots to get. Because, and again, we already did this from pre-production. So when we came, right. like it was, we're on schedule, you know, Christopher Kisun was in charge of VFX um photography and also shooting as well you know so yeah it was like a whole team um albert as well came through and he um did on um, photography with us as well you know exceptional yeah it was a it was a whole team and it was a really fun project you know and it was i would love to see more artists you know investing the time and effort and just researching to to know that like, it takes all of these steps you know all of these things to really separate yourself and um create something different beautiful what would you say is your hope overall for uh visual arts in the virgin islands where would you like to see it go um my hope for visual arts in the virgin islands that's a good question um i would like to see it m more recognized internationally to be honest because a lot of people here do a lot of good work great work I just feel like because we don't have that 
big of a market. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of artists don't get the opportunity to um, showcase their work and their talent, you know, because when visual arts isn't a priority, you know, it's not going to be in your budget. You know, you see it as a, like, yeah. it, it would be nice. It would mm. be nice if I can, you know. It's not and a priority. Exactly. And, you know, we all know how it is to run a business, you know. Like, you're never going to have so much money that you're just like, yeah, Everything, you know. Yeah, yeah. Let, let me just do this thing now that I always wanted to do, you know. But social media presence is a real thing and it generates real money, you know. Like, it might not be direct because we're in the Virgin of Islands. Course. But that's advertising, you know. And you have to adv- you have to um invest in advertising, you know. So I'd like to see more people um get the opportunity to um advertise so that they could um get recognition internationally, you know, because it would be so funny that um some of the stuff you would see like on Instagram mm-hmm. from me, um and Sean, we like the companies actually like are most of the time like in our likes, you know, like I have spoken to um the creative director of Givinci before, like okay. he's like yo, you know, like this is really cool, you know. Like, but it, it's just like, it doesn't really translate, you know, because we don't really have much of an industry for that, unfortunately. Understood. So the growing of the industry through um more local support and appreciation and just understanding of this is an investment and this is a viable thing, you know, um, is what I would love to see. Beautiful. I have to ask you because um, you do quite a bit of traveling um, and, and just like you mentioned, uh, a key aspect, networking. I want you to speak to the up and coming generation uh, who are watching, who may or not be in, may or may not be interested even in the creative space. But how important has uh, your ability uh, to network and walk in a room, read the room, and have conversations benefited you? <sighs> Networking is crazy, honestly, Ron. Like I would tell you, like no lay is crazy because in the BVA, I'm like Terrence. Like everyone sees me, everyone knows me. When I'm away, my girlfriend thinks it's crazy. Like, people are always stopping me. Like, yes. there was literally, like, I could give you a joke. Like, there was this time this lady walked up and she's like, oh, my God, I love your shoes. Mm-hmm. And my girlfriend turns and looks at me because most of the time people are stopping me and they, they want to talk about Got that, you, you know. Yeah. And I've been able to um, meet so much interesting people from that you know like i've made life friends beautiful yeah from that um i'm blessed um this year to um be able to get the opportunity um to go to paris fashion week actually amazing yeah Yeah. i'm going to paris fashion week and that's that's again to network you know so opportunity i got from networking and to go and network even more you know it's super important and i'm honestly not the best at it but it's definitely like I can speak to the musician aspect of uh-huh, it as well, uh-huh. you know, where it's like, you could be the best, you know, but if you, if no one knows you, if people don't know that you're the best, if people don't know that you can do what you can do, you'll never get that opportunity. Like it's like work is like huge, you know, but like, if you don't go out and meet people and speak to people, you know, you'll never get the opportunity. Like, and that's something I find interesting here that people tend to be like, you know, um, Tortola is about, you know, who have what last name mm-hmm. and who have this and who you have that, that. A lot, yeah. who is popular, you know, but I like, well, that's everywhere in the world, you know, Tortola people are not special. That's, it's called networking, Correct. you know, if you want to just stay at home and hide yourself away, you know, and not be seen, then there's nothing wrong with that. You know, you hope your work speaks for itself, but, um, we can't say, you know, not everybody could be Banksy. Correct. You know, like it's, it's just. It's just networking, you know, and that's that's not special to the BVI, like, and that's one mentality I really hope more people would um kind of let go of, you know, because whether or not it's true doesn't really matter, because like I said before, it's true everywhere, you know, it's about you building your platform, you know, like you won't always get the opportunity, you know, but like I said, we did our own music video, you know, we made our own opportunity, Correct. you know, like that's that's something that you have to do, like. You you won't always get recognition, you know. Like I agree, yeah, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. You just have to do it, you know. Like that is that is the essence of like networking, so that when you do meet somebody and you can't and you do speak, you know, you have something to show and say. Well, this is what I did with my friends. This is what I did with my time, you know. And then now you set up yourself to um be able to actually propel and participate in a conversation yes. and get something from it. Beautiful. I, I, I must ask you, because you, you mentioned about persons always stopping you. You have the dopest style. <laughs> I appreciate that. The dopest that. style. 
explain it to me. Where does inspiration come from? Uh, how would you describe your style um, as an individual? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, my style would probably be called. Um, it's like futuristic. It would okay. be like cyberpunk. It's um streetwear. You know, I'm getting older now, so I tend to be a bit more. Um, I try for a bit more minimal stuff. Okay. So like, this is just a plain black sh- black shirt. This is um Jill Sander. Okay. Um, I wear a lot of Alix. I wear a lot of accessories. This is um, Dior. These are, yeah, these are Dior. I think they made like a hundred of these rings, okay. actually. Yeah. So like, as you can see, these are <laughs> pretty. Uh-huh. Yeah. These these tend to get a lot so of more people. more futuristic. Yeah. Very futuristic. You know, like I, I like um, the same thing we spoke about earlier with juxtaposition, yes. you know, like fusing the streetwear with... Um, high fashion stuff, you know, like couture and that kind of Understood. thing. I really like, I, I mean, I can't afford couture, you know, <laughs> but I definitely appreciate, you appreciate it, it, you yeah. know? Yeah. Got you, got you. Well, we have a lot more to talk about with the uh, creative genius himself, the one and only uh, Terrence Neal Jr. Uh, we got to talk about music. So when we come back, we're going to touch on that foundation that introduced him to uh, being the very phenomenal musician that he is today. We'll be right back after a quick commercial break. Brilliant Hands and Minds Tutoring Services, one-on-one tutorials in math and English, intense homework assistance, academic enrichment, school projects, effective communication and public speaking development, sign language for adults and children on Saturdays only. Registered with the Virgin Islands High School Certificate Program, Brilliant Hands and Minds can help you too. Offering intense curriculum-based training to help you or your loved ones get their high school diploma. It's time to make your family's education a number one priority. Hurry, space is limited. Brilliant Hands and Minds Learning Center. We are the trained education professionals. Welcome back, everyone, and thank you so much for sticking with us. Uh, amazing conversation with my good friend, uh, Terrence. Terrence, I have, to, I have to go back to the foundation. I have to go back to the root. I have to go back to childhood. And you mentioned early in in the introduction, uh, going to church um, and having that introduction. Uh, Tell me about that and how it propelled you to be the the phenomenal musician that you are today. Yeah, well, um, I, my mom, according to my mom, you know, I used to just be banging on pots Mm -hmm, and pans, mm -hmm. you know. And um, I remember my first time going to, because we used to go to like a Catholic church before, you know. And my mom um, started looking around. She wanted to go to a different church, you know. And I remember the first time we went to New Testament. And that was my first time seeing a drum set that wasn't just a normal drum mm-hmm, set with mm-hmm, two cymbals. Mm-hmm. You know, Timothy Barker was playing drums. Okay. Yeah. And um, he just had, he had like chimes. And I was like, yo, mommy, like, I like this church. Like, this is crazy, yeah. you know. So funny enough, how I started to learn to play drums is from sitting in the pews and just imitating wow. Timothy Barker. Yeah, that's that's legit. That's gotcha. legit, like, how I learned to play drums. I used to just imitate. Like, so we do it now, you know, you might see me doing it, you know, you might see Brent if you're, like, in a good mood, mm-hmm. like, doing it, you know. And it's real practice. Like, air drums is, like, okay. real practice, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, so that's that's how um I got into it. And then um later on, you know, when I got older, um, actually... I can't omit um my friend Tia Cook, the bassist. Of course. She um always makes jokes about how I was in Alta Scatliff, you know. And um I would actually play drums on the keyboard as well during mm. assembly, you know. Cause we we didn't have any drums yes. until um Mr. Cave Stout came. And then he as well, when he realized he was like he saw me doing he came to the school and he saw me doing like the thing on the keyboard during assembly. And he's like, you know, um, let me, um, can you play drums for real? I was like, yeah, you know? And he actually brought, like, his own, like, private equipment. Amazing. Yeah, there. So that, I, so, like, and, and he elevated. That sounds exactly like him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he elevated, you know? And so it was that, you know, um, I eventually left the school, but I still um, practiced a lot in church. I, I eventually became um, the drummer at okay. the church, you know? And um, Barker just keep being like, yo, you know, discipline, discipline, discipline. And I think that's something that really shows now in my playing, you know, just discipline, not doing too much, even though you can, like, that's, that's a huge thing for me, you know? And eventually, you know, um, I was in the band program in the high school mm-hmm. and um, I think um, I, they, oh, they were playing a certain piece 
I saw Brent post it on like um Facebook or something that they were playing a certain piece. Um, sorry, this is Kamal George, yes. Dalen. Like th- these guys are like the big, the big guys, you know. And I was like, yo, Brent, like I don't need to play drums. Just get me on that gig. Like okay, okay. I need that, you know. And um, he just checked me like I was walking out of the band room. I'm still in high school, and he just checked me like, yo, bro, I get you, you know. Hmm. I was like, what you talking about? He's like, with a gig. Cause you know, like normally, like you would tell somebody something, but they wouldn't take course, you on. Of course, of nah, course. Nah, Brent, yeah. Brent, he was like, "Yo, you said it, and he ran with it." Yeah, he was like, and we work together so much now, you know. But like a lot of like what I have been able to accomplish, you know, is with big help to Brent. Like, so he was like, "Yeah, you know," and um, it just so happened that um, Dale and Penn, my good friend, uh-huh. um, was I think he was getting his um, his wife was pregnant. And um, he had just, she had just, like, while we had rehearsals and stuff, she had just gave birth to um, one of their kids. Mm -hmm. I think his second child. She had just given birth. And so, like, I ended up having to, like, play drums for real. Got you. Yeah. And then after, um, I remember Kamau, like, I remember, I I just wanted in. And then Kamau, like, yeah, Kamau just hands me a check. I'm like, yo, what's this for? He's like, for the gig, man. I'm like okay you know mm-hmm. and he just shakes my hand he's like yeah man welcome to the band you're in nice i'm amazing. like what you know and yeah so from there i've been like playing with like those guys amazing. you know amazing yeah one of the things that i love about this conversation and and i love about you just as a person in knowing you terence is that the opportunity to be able to work with so many like-minded talented creatives across the virgin islands is something that you really value. And we have worked together um, uh, before. I wanna talk about that fraternity of creatives and the importance of, my question is, communicating together, learning together without competing. Yeah, yeah. Um, Why I would say, first of all, especially for me, I tend to be in a more directorship role these days. And one of the important things I would say to be a good director is um, being able to um, trust people to do their part, you know, um, being able to rely on people, being able to take other people's advice. So like, for instance, like I would have an idea for a shot or whatever, and Shamar would be like, yo, you know, um, I kind of feel like we could do it this way, you know? Mm-hmm. And my thing is always, let's try both, you know? Um, if I'm working with um, Brent on something, you know, that's 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 all motto right there. You know, like once me and Brent in the studio, like if we have two ideas, mm-hmm. it's like we're going to try both. You gotcha. know, we for sure. Like, you know, just the other day um, we were doing rehearsals with um, I was doing rehearsals with um, Tia mm-hmm. and Alton, you know, and I had an idea and I was like, yo, Tia, you know, da, 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 da. And she she tried it and she was like, yo, you know, I feel like I should just stick to um, the low end, you know, and I'm like. You're the bass player, you know, Got like you. no problem. You know, I feel like respecting people in their Absolutely. roles is like a huge, so big, you know, and just like remembering why why I hired you in the first place, why I reached out in the fourth Heck place, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. like just respect people. I feel like that's the biggest thing, you know, and just also like show people appreciation, you know, like I, I couldn't come here without calling a list of names, you know. Because these are people who I work with and appreciate. And giving flowers. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Always, you know, like whenever you see me, whenever I have the opportunity, I always say like, yo, you know, these people are incredible, you know, like Sean Black, incredible. Brent Hoyt, incredible. Like these are people who I work with on a daily basis on a lot of things. And yeah, you know, incredible people. Amazing. I have to ask you though, when it comes to the creative space, what would you say has been the biggest lesson you've learned in, in, lesson. Being a, in being a creative? Um, discipline. Okay. Discipline. I would say definitely discipline. Like I have learned discipline and I have learned how to do research. Mm-hmm. Funny enough, because you know, like, oh, they're like, yo, you know, like go to school, um, do these things, you know, like this is how you learn to do research. I just happen to be worried in a, in a way where like I learned to do research from being an enthusiast. Got you. You know, like everyone's everyone's not like that, but like I just like so everyone would tell you like if I'm if I'm into something, like I'm going to dive into it, bro. Like anything, like anything, like I'm going to dive in. I feel like one of the biggest things um I wish we had more of here is enthusiasts. Just people who would like 
they would see something and they like don't trust their knowledge or like mm-hmm. approach mm-hmm. and that's probably another thing i could say like approach everything like you're dumb yeah like don't think you know anything like read like legit read watch videos like don't just play the video and like you know and say well bye yeah nah like because i didn't i didn't start graphic design until um recently like two years okay. you know and like i've been doing stuff and like people have legit been reaching out like i don't advertise that i'm a graphic artist but like other like photographers and stuff you know people who do stuff like have reached out and they're like yo you know i like what you did specifically like can you, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I feel like, yeah, I feel like just, that's just off of research. You know, whenever I have an idea in my head, I don't just get lazy. And I'm like, yo, you know, like, um, yeah, you know, let me just check Sean. Sean, Sean could do it for me. You know what I mean? Like, I I research, you know, and then it's also like discipline where like you learn so much and um, you don't, you can't apply it to everything one time. You know, sometimes you have to show restraint. That's good art. Gotcha. You know, that's good music, you know. Good music is restraint, you know. And just applying that to everything in your life, you know, like stoicism, you know, like you you can't control everything. Mm-hmm. Everything can't a hundred percent be like how you want it to be. Like you have to show restraint, you have to show discipline, and that that would then tie into you out as well. Um, not trying to over control people when you walk with them, you know. It's just discipline or a situation yeah yeah, yeah exactly Amazing. stoicism yeah situations what you would you say is uh next next for you um next um right now i'm preparing for music fest with monet beautiful yeah so i shout out to the lovely monet yeah shout out to monet um i got my first um chance to be her music director at festival last year like officially, so um, this was in the U.S. Virgin Islands. No, that that was here. Okay, in the BVI, I did um the Tortola okay. festival. So we're preparing for that right now. I'm also preparing for Fashion Week, like we spoke about okay, earlier. Yeah, I have some opportunities that I don't think I could speak about as That's yet. Fine. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Um, what else do I have? I think that's about it right okay. now. Yeah. Well, brother, I want to thank you so much for gracing the set season six. Uh, another season could not have gone by without you. No, um, I appreciate having, it. Having been here and, and spitting your wisdom and sharing your gift of creativity with the world because it's a very vulnerable space. Thank um, you. Uh, putting your work out there and putting yourself, um, stepping behind of, of, of the camera, stepping behind of the screen and showing the face of a lot of the work that we see. I appreciate the hell out of you. I appreciate the hell bro, out of you. Bro, I appreciate you so much um, for inviting me, man. Love and light. Yes, thank you, Absolutely. bro. Absolutely. Anytime. Thank you. Viewers, uh, we were here chopping it up with my dear friend, the one and only Terrence Neal Jr., uh, creative director and visual artist extraordinaire. We are in the heart of season six, and I'm having an absolute blast. Thank you guys so much for sticking with us. I'll see you next week. <laughs>